Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will discuss with some of the important parameters for alternators or synchronous generators or AC generators. Okay, the important parameters are mainly related with the armature windings. And the things that we are going to discuss in this video are coil span, pole pitch, full pitch and short pitch windings, pitch factor and distribution factor. And we will discuss about winding factor and concentrated and distributed windings. These are the major topics that we will discuss through this video. Okay. So first we can discuss about what is meant by coil pitch or coil span and pole pitch. Here you can see a coil. It is wandered like this. And this is, here you can see two poles, north and south poles. First we will discuss with coil span. Coil span is nothing but the distance between two adjacent coil sides of a coil. That means <clears throat> in this coil, this is one of the coil side and this is the another coil side or this coil side is just opposite to that of this coil side. So the distance between these adjacent coil sides of a single coil is known as coil span and simply we can say that pole pitch is nothing but the distance between the centers of the two adjacent poles okay here north and south poles that you can see here if we draw the a line from the center of this north and south poles then the distance between the centers of these two poles will be the pole pitch that is the difference between the coil pan coil span or coil pitch and pole pitch okay once again i will explain you that coil span is nothing but the distance between the coil sides of a coil but pole pitch is nothing but the distance between the centers of the two adjacent poles that is the major definition regarding with the coil span and the pole pitch. Okay. And based on this, we can say that there will be two types of pitch windings. That is full pitched coils or short pitched coils. And for full pitched coils, full pitched coil means means coil pitch is 180 degree. 180 electrical degree for full pitched windings or full pitched coils. That means the angle, the if we draw a line from the centers of these two poles along with the coil sides, we can say that it will be 180 electrical degree. But for short pitched windings, there will be some angle difference between the coil sides and the if we uh, draw a line from the center of this pole then there will be some difference and that type of coils can be categorized under the short pitched or fractional pitch type of windings okay and we will discuss about this full pitch and short pitched windings in detail in the coming sections okay so a coil side in a coil having n number of turns it will be 2n okay that means a single coil consists of two coil sides if there are n number of coils then number of coil sides will be 2 into n okay these are the major sections in this slide next we will discuss about what is meant by full pitched coils already just i introduce you what is meant by the full pitched coils here if the coil span is equal to pole pitch simply 
coil span is nothing but the distance between the adjacent coil sides and pole pitch is nothing but the dist uh, distance between the adjacent poles centers of the adjacent poles so for full pitch windings this coil span is equal to pole pitch that is one of the important point about the full pitched coil and another important point is that angular distance between two adjacent or consecutive poles will be 180 electrical degree here is here we can we can say that it is 180 electrical degree there is no phase difference any other phase difference in this case so we will get maximum emf at this case compared with the short pitch or fractional pitch windings in full pitch coils, we will get the maximum EMF because the phase difference between the adjacent coil sides will be 180 electrical degree. Okay, that is the main important point about the full pitch coils. Based on this, now we can discuss about short pitch coils. Short pitch coils are the coils in which there will be some difference in the space between the coil side to the straight line that we are drawing from the centers of this pole. That means for short pitched coils, we know that coil span is nothing but the distance between the two adjacent coil sides. Here it is. You can see that here, this much of regions. But pole pitch. In the case of this short pitch windings will be from here to here that means the centers of the two adjacent poles but for short pitch coils this pole pitch is not equal to coil span here will be some difference and that difference is normally represented as sigma or epsilon or something like that so for short pitch windings coil span will be 180 minus alpha or sigma so here will be some difference in this coil sides to the this region so that is an important point about the short pitch windings due to these difference that is 180 minus alpha we will not get the maximum emf due to these difference if the value of this alpha or sigma increases then the entire output or the resultant output will also decreases so if the value of this alpha is very less or if it is zero then we will get the maximum output at that condition we can say that it is full pitched coils but for short pitched coils it will not be the angle between the two adjacent coil span will not be exactly 180 degree there will be some difference that is 180 minus <coughs> alpha or sigma that is an important point about the short pitched windings and we can simply say that if you draw a straight line from this pole to this coil sides then we cannot say that two coil sides are not under these pods any one of the coil side may be under this pod but the other will not be like it will not be due to the difference in this angle so these are the main fact about the short pitched coils based on the fact about the full pitch and short pitched coils we can discuss about pitch factor or coding factor that is normally represented as kp it is one of the major parameter for the armature windings in alternators okay pitch factor or coding factor is which mainly depends on the emf induced in the short pitched windings and full pitched windings for short pitched windings already we discussed that the AMF induced in the two opposite coil sides will be less than 180 electrical degree. That is normally represent. Normally we can write 180 minus alpha. And the resultant EMF obtained from the two adjacent coil sides of a coil can be add vectorically. Okay. 
But for full pitch windings, the phase angle between the two adjacent coil sides will be exactly 180 degree. So the resultant voltage or EMF induced, uh, sorry, obtained from the two adjacent coil sides will be the arithmetic sum of the individual voltages. So pitch factor or coding factor is related with the EMF induced in the short, short pitched windings and also in the full pitched windings. In this, this is a vector diagram that shows the relation between the relation between the voltage induced in two coil sides. Here we can see this will be the EMF induced in one of the coil side, this E. And this E will be the EMF induced in the another coil side. So the resultant EMF induced in that coil will be like this. <coughs> so this line will be the result. This line will represent the resultant EMF that can obtain from a single coil. We know that for a single coil there will be two coil sides. And the EMF induced in the two coil sides can be represented like this E. So the angle between the resultant EMF to the one of the coil sides will be alpha by 2. Alpha is nothing but the short circuit angle or simply chord angle. That is nothing but the angle between the, the change in that angle. Okay for short pitch windings. So this vector diagram shows the resultant voltage induced for single coil. Okay. In this diagram we can simply write ER. ER is nothing but the resultant EMF will be equal to 2E cos alpha by 2. 2E cos alpha by 2. And we can say that the pitch factor is equal to the ratio of the resultant EMF of the short pitch coils divided by the resultant EMF in the full pitch coils. This equation is very very important. And we can say that the voltage or EMF induced in the short pitch coil will be the phasor sum of the coil EMFs. But for full pitch coils, the induced EMF will be the arithmetic sum of the EMFs. And we know that the arithmetic sum will be always higher than that of the phasor sum. So that the value of Kp will be always less than or equal to 1. Or normally it is less than 1. And this point is also very important for technical exams. And based on this we can say that Phasor sum of the EMF induced in the short pitch coil can be 2E cos alpha by 2. But for full pitch windings, net EMF in one coil will be 2 into E. So, on solving this, we will get pitch factor is equal to cos alpha by 2. Where alpha is nothing but the chord angle or short pitch angle. This alpha is present only in the case of short pitched windings. But for full pitched windings, alpha will be zero. That means the phase difference between the voltage induced in the two adjacent coil sides will be 180 electrical degree. So that then it voltage in the full pitched coil will be the <coughs> sum of the voltage induced in the two coil sides that is 2E. So Kp is equal to cos alpha by 2. This is the major important major equation for pitch factor or coding factor. If the harmonics are present there, then we can write the equation for the pitch factor Kpr is equal to cos r into alpha by 2, where r is nothing but the harmonics that can be odd harmonics or 3. 5, 7, 9 or something like that. R is the, R represents the harmonics present in the 
voltage. Uh, the important one of the another important point regarding with this short pitch winding or pitch factor is that suitable value for alpha is 30 degree. This point is also very important for technical exams. The value of alpha is normally choose, choose for alternator for the construction of armature in alternator that is alpha is equal to 30 degree. Okay. Now, based on this, we can discuss about the distribution factor or breadth factor or spread factor. These are the different names for distribution factor. And it is normally represented as KD. Distribution factor is mainly related with the voltage or EMF induced in the concentrated winding to the distributed winding okay we will discuss about this concentrated winding and distributed winding in the coming sections but for distribution factor i can say that the concentrated windings in concentrated windings the coil sides of any one phase under one pole are bunched in one slots and the total emf induced will be equal to the arithmetic sum of the AMF induced in each coils under one pole. But for distributed windings, the coil sides are distributed. So the resultant AMF of the windings will be the phasor sum of the AMF induced per coil sides. So distribution factor is related with the AMF induced in the concentrated winding to the distributed winding. For concentrated winding, the net EMF will be the arithmetic sum of the EMFs induced in each coil sides. But for distributed, distributed windings, the net EMF will be the phasor sum of the individual EMF induced in each coil sides. So distribution factor KD, we can write KD is equal to EMF induced in the distributed winding divided by EMF induced in the concentrated winding. We know that for distributed winding, the net EMF will be the phasor sum. But for concentrated winding, the net EMF will be the vector sum of the EMF induced in each coil sides. So this ratio will give you the relation between the this ratio will give you the give you the distribution factor. And the distribution factor will be always less than 1 because Vector sum is always greater than this phasor sum. Okay. And now we can derive an equation for distribution factor KD. For that, here you can see in this diagram AC, CD, DE, EF up to FB that will represents coil sides of a coil in this coil side ac will induce voltage ec that is drawn like here this dotted line and the voltage induced in the coil side cd will be also ec and voltage induced in the coil side de will induce voltage of ec that is drawn here and up to b the coil sides will induce voltage EC. And here you can see an angle beta. That is nothing but the angular displacement between two slots. Here OA, OC, OD, OE, OF up to OB that will represent different slots. So the angular displacement between the slots is normally represented as beta and if we draw a bisector in this coil side ac that is like this and if we draw the bisectors for each coil sides that will meet at the point o that will bisect the coil sides like this 
at that time this angle will be beta by 2 normally this angle is beta if we bisect it then this angle will be beta by 2 and this will be also beta okay so based on this we can derive the what will be the emf induced in this coil side that will be e is equal to the voltage induced in the side ac that will be equal to 2 into oa sin beta by 2 the arithmetic sum of the voltage induced in two coil sides will be m into 2 oa sin beta by 2 here m is nothing but the number of slots per pole per phase that is m so here one more thing is that here beta is equal to 180 divided by n here n is the number of slots per pole okay n is the number of slots per pole and here m is number of slots per pole per phase so the resultant emf in this diagram we need to find the resultant emf across this a b that is er here already we have seen that the voltage induced in one coil that is m into 2 oa sin beta by 2 but for up to this region we need to find the total emf so that can be represented as er is equal to ab is equal to 2 into oa sin this angle will be angle o angle a o b that is normally represented as m beta so er is equal to 2 oa sin angle a o b divided by 2 here angle a o b is nothing but the angle between these slots up to this value up to this angle between this a b that is m beta we can simply write it as m beta angle a o b can be m beta so this equation will become er is equal to 2 into oa sin m beta by 2 okay so distribution factor kd is equal to the phasor sum of emfs divided by the arithmetic sum of emfs that means its value will be if we apply the value for the phasor sum of emfs that is 2 into oa sin m beta by 2 divided by the arithmetic sum then we will get the final equation for distribution factor that is equal to sin m beta by 2 divided by m sin beta by 2 this is the final equation for the to find out the distribution factor so this value is where this equation is very very important and the thing is if the value of m is equal to 1 then we can say that the winding winding is concentrated winding if the winding is uh, if the this factor m is greater than or equal to 2 then the winding is distributed winding okay these are the major points about the distribution factor so this the from this equation we can simply say that kd is nothing but the ratio of emf induced in the distributed winding to the emf induced in the concentrated winding that is another equation for this distribution distributed winding okay now let us discuss with the concentrated winding and distributed winding already we discussed about the concentrated winding here you can see in this diagram all these windings are wounded together to form multi turn coil that means all the turns having a single magnetic axis and the value for kp and kd means which factor and distribution factor will be one and the emf induced in this concentrated winding is equal to root 2 pi f n phi here f is the 
frequency, fundamental frequency, and n is the number of turns in the coil, phi is the working flux. And the important point is in concentrated winding, it will give you maximum output voltage. And this type of concentrated windings are mainly used for saline dipole machines, saline dipole synchronous machines, DC machines and transformers etc. because there is no rotational torque is produced. And distributed winding. All the windings are arranged in different pulpits or different coils. And the coils are inserted into slots and they will spread along the air gap periphery. And uh, this type of windings will not have same magnetic axis. It will have different magnetic axis because the field windings are spreaded. And we, the EMF induced in this windings will be less when compared with the concentrated winding. Now let us discuss the advantages of this distributed winding. The distributed winding will reduce the harmonics and we will get the improved waveform, AC waveform. And it will diminish the armature reaction also. And it will provide better cooling. And the car is fully utilized as the conductors. And, the distribution, and they are distributed over the slots of the armature periphery. And but uh, the main disadvantages of disadvantage of this distributed winding is that we will get a reduced voltage. Okay, these are the major points regarding with the armature windings of alternator. Okay. Thank you.